getting the tractor. Good morning everybody, my name is Osa. It is Saturday morning, last Saturday in August, and we have um, stuff to sell. So this is the grass that we pulled off that field there and that field there. I have managed to get all of the corn or maize into the silage bunker and that's now brewing nicely. And this tractor with this weight is just about capable of lifting a full bucket of silage. Now we got about, I think it was a hundred thousand litres of silage in that. Oops. So it will take about five, six trips to sell it all, but we only have to go down the road, so it's not that bad. Um, looks like we've serviced everything fairly recently. That's good. So during this last week, I did a whole bunch of lime contracts because we have the uh, the Kubota fertilizer spreader, which is capable of running with lime. And um, I bought a thing. I bought a silo over there, which is that's. Excuse me a minute. There seems to be some stuff. Ah! I didn't put the lime away. So we have on hand 2,200 litres of solid fertiliser and about five and a half litres, thousand litres of lime. 5616. We are going to need to lime the cornfield, which is just over the other side of that grass field. I did sell the grass roller because I figured we have absolutely no use for that. Now apparently um, on some maps a grass roller does add a level of fertile, uh, no sorry, a, a level of growth when you're running um, the thing, precision farming. Um, obviously it can't run fertilizer because it's a uh, it's a piece of machinery, and machinery doesn't add a chemical to your field. So, normally a grass roller, you use that in base game, no precision farming. That will add a level of fertilization. For pre precision farming, they changed it. It adds a level of growth. So, you take your field from harvested to growing stage one. Um, now on some maps, apparently that works. Um, on maps with custom textures, not so much. So this map, you, ta you take it up to growth stage one and obviously it grows, next stage is growth stage two. But you take something from harvested and wait a month and it goes up to growth stage two. So there's no benefit to using it. We don't need it. This map does not get that benefit. I think I would like to take out this patch of grass. It's a little bit awkward when shoveling stuff out of the uh, bunker. Now, I don't believe we are going to uncover the silage at the end of the bunker now. So 
I think if I'd had time this week, I would probably have done at least half of this, unfortunately. Um, been a little bit busy. So, Mrs. Osa is off visiting family this week, along with teenage Osa. So, I am on my own. Next weekend is a holiday weekend. There will be a stream on Saturday. There will be a stream on Monday. There will not be any young kids next week because they're going to visit their grandparents. So, two weeks in a row, they're going to be quiet and we're going to get three, three streams in two weeks. So that's going to be all good fun. Now this week, it is October. Um, we're on October 2, as I said, I did a lot of line contracts and what have you. The reason I bought the, the big silo for solid stuff is because a lot of the line contracts were on this side of the map and quite frankly that spreader does not hold an awful lot. So most fields we're having to come back and refill at least twice if not three times. Not counting the first load when you get there. But it will help at least locally. Um, and you know, on the other side of the map, the store has a um, lime cell point. So it's all good, convenient stuff, at least for now. Alrighty, let's get this thing on the road. So I have already checked, best prices at exports. So that's where we're gonna take all this. And I just noticed it is three o'clock in the afternoon. I did have an interesting workaround for our cornfield needs to be ploughed. I could plant a cover crop of grass in that field and then run the grass subsoiler which removes the need to plow. We could then wait till spring, harvest one round of grass, and then plow it up with a cultivator and replant it as corn. I'm sort of liking that idea. However, if we bought a plow, we could make money from plowing contracts. So, um, yeah, there's ways and means. Now, the grass subsoiler isn't very wide. It's only three meters, but a lot of the subsoilers are only three meters. We don't have the horsepower to run a an 8 meter, 6 meter subsoiler. Um, I don't have any other harvesting equipment at this point, so doing harvesting contracts is probably not going to be our thing this year. Um, we're arable only at the moment, so again probably not going anywhere once it starts snowing. We just have to make sure we have enough cash on hand to cover the uh, loan re or the loan payments, not repayments. I'm probably not going to have an op Well, I say that. I might have an opportunity to repay one or both of the loans. Now I am going to jump out here. 
Um, this is a ready to harvest state. So it's not growth stage three of three. Um, I could wait till next month to do it. You can mow in November, but let's have a look at the weather. Oh, that's handy. Um, tomorrow and the day after are going to be rain all of November. We might get a break at the end of November, but I don't really want to be carting grass silage down to the um, store in the middle of December. However, that would mean immediate income at the beginning of January or at the beginning of spring. So that's always a possibility. Anyway, let's park this here. And I will leave the engine running just so that we can see how full it is. as we're loading it. Okay, oh actually we've got 160,000 litres in here, so that's, that's more than I thought we had. So that's about 50,000. We've already got 42,000 from all the contracts I did. <coughs> I haven't looked at contracts lately. Um, so there's a ton of baling contracts and I believe they're all silage. There's one cultivating, there's a bunch of harvesting. See, there's a lot of plowing contracts. I could, if I bought a plow, I could use it. I don't think I've got anything else that works as a plow. Also, I am going, I'm probably going to take that uh, grassland subsoiler out to the cornfield and see if it works as a plow. It supposedly only works on grass, but yeah, you don't find out until you test these things. Both tractors are busy at the moment, so I can't do that. I think it's usual when making about 5,000 per truckload. Sixties, eight truckloads, five eights of forty thousand. So we've got about forty thousand. We'll double the money we're currently sitting at if I sell all of this right now. And obviously, we do have to empty this before I can start cutting the next round of grass. <coughs> This is quarter of a day done, so we kind of finished that at four o'clock yesterday afternoon, five o'clock yesterday afternoon. So it's not going to be ready until November two, one, late November one, so probably won't be able to sell any till November two. However, since we, we're only going to need one bunker now before winter. The best time to sell silage is actually end of December, January. Um, we could leave both bunkers full and untouched until that time and then start selling stuff. But that does mean keeping everything exactly where it is. So as I said, Cultivator, we've still got the 7R, which is 305 to 388. That, I can't have really afford it. There's this thing, which is disc harrow, 
six meter disc harrow 160 180 horsepower we could run that um, mower thing thing 9RT this big um, can't really justify something that big right now shame there's that thing that allows me to turn a tractor into a forage harvester but again not really much use for us that's bigger than what we have 20 to 24 thousand um, I'm assuming that's with that's 22 that's with a cover so it comes with a cover as standard on this one 20, oh. interesting um, then you've got the grain configuration 24 and a half which says it comes with a cover but I'm not seeing it so default configuration for this used piece of equipment it has PDT cover it's kind of cool it's what 4,000 liters bigger than the one we have there's this small plow which if uh, if we're going to be running corn might be a plan um, there's a little Zetor uh, which just doesn't have really have the horsepower that is uh, cut sugar beets we're not doing sugar beets at the moment so not fussed about that I'd like one of those eventually but not right now this again is interesting it has the full extension so it is ah, what's the word for it forage mode I don't know if that's too tall for us still 12 and a half 22 and a half wheel setup standard chassis color gray yeah it's a thing and it's quite cheap hang on 9,000 oh it does charge us for the fitted options now well that's a shame okay huge plow which obviously I don't have the horsepower to run that but I do like that plow there's this which I don't have the horsepower to run right now um, that is a pickup header I could buy that, stick that on the front of our um, forage harvester and we could pick up the, uh, the conditioned grass that way. It's conditioned grass and straw, straw or straw. Don't know what that means. Um, and then there's a auger wagon for things, sugar beets. Anyway, um, how are we doing? 13,000 about two more scoops so a couple of interesting things at the store but when it boils down to it it's what the farm needs not um, I am going to need that at some point in the future I just don't have the operating capital to justify it today Oops, slow down. more so I watched a little bit of Tom Pemberton's farm this week that is definitely coming along the uh, I'm guessing his milking parlor is almost finished and uh, there may be oh the manure channel from the back shed has been installed this week too okay I am just not too happy here 152,000 so 
we're going to spend a little bit of money, hopefully not too much. There we go. Landscaping, painting. It's uh, animal mud. Um, let's turn that on. Change brush size. Probably costing me a lot of money, but all I really want here is to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, oh, that was the better one. Oh, well. There now. Okay, that's sufficient. Turn that off, that is off. Okay, now we can see what's happening at the end of the, uh, the bunker. I think this end is all concreted nicely. Yeah. And we can tell the help text off. It's already four o'clock in the afternoon. I'm not sure I'm going to get that many loads done today uh, since we are running at times three. They do have the, uh, the big weight on the front, so... Uh, we shouldn't get pushed too much by a heavy load behind us. It did rain. I think the rain came about one o'clock today, which is why we're kind of late in the day. So five, it's 5,500, that's not bad. Ugh. And we have Patchwork resubscribed a few seconds ago. Good morning, welcome to the stream and thank you for the subscription. I'm, yeah, I'm kind of thinking, in general, when I'm buying tractors, it's probably best to buy new ones. Just because it takes them longer to get damaged. And especially in the case of this tractor, I can't afford $3,000 every time I go for a trip to the store. So... Uh, just works out a little bit better to have new ones. Now things like the horridge, horridge, the part of the porridge plant, I'll just go home. Forage harvester. That is going to be 
only used when we're foraging corn, maybe whole crop silage, but just not too frequently. So I'm kind of thinking with that one, um, it doesn't matter that it's it's older or used or whatever. I think that one's actually new because it's what I could afford. Now, if a big forest harvester comes available on the used market, I may consider buying it just because it's going to be a lot more capable. Not that our haulage equipment's a lot more capable at this point. And thus, um, we'll be able to, uh, I can justify a big used forage harvester for the farm. And we'll sell our little old brand new one. kind of a little disappointed that the used equipment it comes with extras but um, they're a charged extra you know the, uh, the old way of doing things if I pull up used equipment go here see this is a 270 that's a 305 horsepower engine You have to pay the extra, 34,041, and then we're back to zero. Um, but you've got an attacher at the front. Oh, you get three-pointer or a front loader. Hmm. 